fiscal policy team returned to their seats before the Guam legislature today for special session, trying to garner their support to pass Bill 13S, proposing a $343 million bond to pay out all past due tax refunds and COLA. The fiscal team answered questions as to whether the government can afford borrowing all the way up to its debt ceiling and meet the 20 plus million dollars in debt service over the next 30 years. The governor's chief fiscal policy advisor, Bernie Artero, maintains the $343 million bond is part of a package that includes a fiscal stabilization plan, but the Democrats said they needed some hard numbers to back that plan up. When would we know that? The affordability of the bond was, uh, was uh, contingent on two, two uh, scenarios. One was um, you asked to see a 10-year projection, and so we did that, and it shows that we could maintain that. And where you see the negatives in the latter years of 2020 and 2021, I did mention, you're correct, uh, uh, hopefully in place would be all these um, initiatives. But the other option was just looking at the roll-off of the uh, debt service that uh, will expire or mature before the actual debt service begins for the bond and what that uh, leaves us with is finding eight and a half million to afford the bond and as you as you know uh, organic growth is um, it you know it's it ranges from 20 to 30 million a year just organic growth and I'm sure that in that uh, in that scenario we could come up with the eight and a half million. We need something more concrete than what it is that you're telling us. And I don't know, Mr. Chairman, but seeing this stabilization plan, I like to see something more concrete than this. I like to see numbers applied to this. I want to see whether in the, uh, in the um, bond covenant that there are going to be these measures that will be in there to tie this government to doing this. Because I was here when we borrowed $212 million. $112 was supposed to be for tax refund. And John, you were here. You were here and you told us, allow us to borrow this so we won't be down this road today. Well, we're down this road again two years later. Madam Speaker, um, we were borrowing but not to pay off everything. I think that's, that's the difference between now what we want to do here is we want to try and pay off all the prior liabilities and what moving forward which what the provision for refund calls for is to entertain the, the future tax. That's what we're trying to do here. According to Senator Tony Atta, he believes paying it all off now would be better than paying a portion through Senator Ben Pangilinan's $180 million bond proposal of which $120 million would go to pay past due tax refunds. Now that debt service is 12, about $12.5 million. Roughly 12.4, yeah. And that would only take care of a portion of what is past due. Past due. So what is past due? The remaining past due now will still have to be paid annually, correct? Or monthly. You know, we, we still have to make out tax returns every month, right? Yes. For yes, what is cash. past due. Yes. Yes. So in a sense, we could actually be paying more than what the 25 million debt service would be if we were just to pay out all the past due tax returns, uh, pa uh, past due tax refunds. Am, am I correct? Yeah, that's correct. Bottom line, according to Artero, the bond is critical in getting the government's finances back in order. This is an existing debt that we're moving the debt from, from the taxpayers to a bank. And now to consider that it's, it's, well, let's just continue owing the taxpayers. I don't think that's, uh, that's correct either. And as far as my uh, areas of concern and financing, uh, we cannot stabilize this government with this big debt on our backs. And, um, uh, it's, and I keep saying it's part of a package. Meanwhile, when lawmakers return from their lunch break, Vice Speaker B.J. Cruz introduced an amendment to use a portion of the bond proceeds to pay past due contributions to the retirement fund. It was earlier this week Retirement Fund Board Chair Joe T. St. Augustine wrote a letter to both the legislature and the governor concerning how amidst all the budget bills being entertained, none included provisions to address outstanding employer and employee contributions. The retirement fund warned that should a bond measure be passed which does not adequately pay down the outstanding contributions plus interest, the fund will contend that the health insurance bailout agreement of fiscal year 2011 has been breached. The Cruz Amendment passed. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza.